guys and welcome back. Okay, so in the last lecture, what we did, we made our LED blink. Okay, so in this lecture, we're going to make our design a bit more interactive. So it's, it is time to develop a more complex design, which will allow us or allow you to practice using the tools in preparation for your future embedded processor projects. So in this exercise, we're going to look at how to make the processor read values from the user input. So in this case, a simple button push. And then we use that information to control some of the outputs. And in our case, we'll just output a single LED. So once again, this will require the use of the supplied software drivers, which have been provided by the library generator tool. And this happens when we created our BSP. So all software drivers read or write to an address in memory, which in turn is mapped to a register in a peripheral. The job of a peripheral is to make the hardware registers appear as if they are memory. This is so that the processor believes that it's simply reading and writing to, to RAM. The fact that the peripheral adds extra functionality to these registers for controlling UARTs, GPIO, and other functions is completely hidden from the processor. So on the micro Z board, the push button is connected to MIO51, and the LED is connected to MIO47, as we saw in early exercises. So for our first example, we shall make a processor read a simple button push, and then simply output the state to an LED. So obviously this could be done by wiring a switch to an LED in FPGA programmable logic, but we will use software for the purposes for our learning. Okay, so let's go to our design that we have created. So if we go to our hello world example that we have hacked into a blink LED example. So what we're going to do now is we're going to rename this to exercise 05, which I've done already. We can rename this also to lab 5 or exercise 5, depending on what you want to do. So I'm just going to call it lab 5. Okay, click OK. And now what we're going to do is we're going to change some of our parameters that we have over here to fit our needs. Okay, so let's take it from the top. What do we have? We can delete all this commenting if we want to. Just so that our design looks a bit cleaner. And take out all the other stuff that we don't need. Okay, so first we need to include our main libraries, which are SDDO, Platform, GPIS, and as well as X parameters. And then we go into our main function. We obviously need our X GPIO PS config. We need our structs as well. We need status, but we do not need delay and count. That's because they were used in this function over here. That is for our delay blink LED example. So we can go ahead and delete this. We want to have our init platform over here to initialize our, our code. And over here we have printf. Now we could put a hello world or we can just label it exercise 05. So what will happen is when we go through our code, this one will print through the UART, will print exercise 05 and give a new line after that. Over here we leave this the same as before. So we're going to have our lookup config with our X parameters, as mentioned in the previous videos, with our device ID as well. And then we also want our status to return our structs, as well as the base address. And now over here, this is where our code begins. So first off, we're going to set our direction of our GPI open, and then we're going to copy this line, Control and C, and then Control and V. And then this one we're going to change to 51 because that is the pin of our button on our FPGA. Okay, so then we're going to en set enable pin. So this is for our LED. We're going to set the output enable pin for that. Over here, we can delete this whole code, which was meant for delaying our LED. So now what we can do, we're going to put a new while statement. We're going to type in while. So this is a forever loop with a one inside. And now we can take our status, which is going to, we're going to put in our struct to read the pin. So that'll be X G P I O P S. And we'll read our pin. 
and then we're going to add in our struct. We're going to call it GPIO. So we've got a struct there, and then we're going to get the status for pin 51. So we're going to read that. Okay, and then if we get a semicolon, and then over here, what we're going to do is going to we're going to write status to our LED. Or basically, we're going to read our button, and then we're going to write it to our LED. So go ahead and step in X, GP. I O P S. We're going to right pin and then put in our my GPIO struct. We're going to then output it to pin 47 or MIO 47. That's where our LED is. And then we're going to write our status bit to it. Okay, press Control and Save. Okay, let's test if our code works. So just wait for it to pull our workspace. And once it's built, right click on our XS5 run as, and then launch on hardware. So you'll see this selected debug session already exists. Do you want to relaunch the application? Click OK. Just wait for it to download to the FPGA. And now if you press the button, you'll see that it works perfectly as expected. OK, thank you for watching this lecture. And in the next lecture, what we're going to do is we're going to be reading and writing from memory. I'll see you in the next lecture.